As I was saying, fortunately, a number of institutional processes have developed spontaneously in the market and, in most cases, remove the need for haggling. We are now going to consider the second, third and fourth types of exchange processes. We will call the second type one-sided competition among buyers. It involves only one potential seller or the seller of one unit of a good and several or many potential buyers. Institutionally speaking, we can very easily visualize it because it is the case of an auction. When a Van Gogh painting goes up for auction, there is only one such object in the world and there are many potential buyers. There are auction houses, like Sotheby's, that announce upcoming auctions to attract as many potential buyers as possible, which we will see is beneficial. There are two types of auctions. The English auction is the traditional auction, which begins with a starting price, and bids are made until the highest bid is reached and the deal is closed. The Dutch auction is conducted in the opposite fashion. It begins with a very high price, which then gradually decreases, and the first to pay it makes the purchase. The English auction is the typical auction in which people bid on a painting. The Dutch auction well, for example, imagine a market for attractive slaves in Rome. I read about this example the other day. So, they bring out a beautiful girl, they display her, and they ask a sky-high price, one million cistercii. And everybody cries, that's crazy, what an outrageous price. Then they start to lower it. There is no buyer at one million. The price is now 950,000, 900,000, 800,000 and a bunch of chubby, lecherous senators start thinking, I hope nobody else gets her, maybe that other man's going to get her. 750, now one is getting nervous. 700, and he can't take it anymore. Me! And that man buys her for 700. He may be making a mistake. In that downward auction, like the Dutch auction, perhaps the buyer could have waited longer. But the risk of waiting is that somebody else may buy the girl. Let us look at another example. We will imagine it is a case similar to one we considered before. There is one potential seller of a horse, and he values the horse at 100 monetary units. But here, unlike before, there is not just one potential buyer, A, who values the horse at 300. Instead, there are other potential buyers, AD, AE, AB, and AC who value the horse at 280, 250, 220, and 200. Well, if under such circumstances B were to act hastily, let's say B is the desperate widow who must sell her house, if she were to rush into a deal and sell the house to the first person who walked by, for example to Mr. AC for 200 monetary units, she would be committing a very grave entrepreneurial error because there are other people who are willing to pay more. If the desperate, tearful widow who has an urgent need to sell her house has a minimum of good sense, she will start by placing an ad which states that her house is for sale and her goal will be to let as many people as possible know, to give them the information that the chance to acquire this house exists, just as Sotheby's produces a catalogue and distributes it worldwide to attract many potential buyers. The moment there are several potential buyers and one sole potential seller, the market process, driven by the force of entrepreneurship, swings into action. How does it swing into action? Well, that's very simple. Mr. AC is willing to pay up to 200, and he offers Ms. B maybe 150, and Ms. B is going to agree to close the deal, because at 150 it is in her interest. But right before she does, as the other people there are entrepreneurs, and they are in an institutional environment, bidding, in which they detect that possibility, Mr. AB, before the deal closes, says, no, I'll pay 210. Well, as soon as Mr. AB offers 210, Mr. AC's bid becomes void, and Ms. B is thrilled. Look at that, the buyers are fighting among themselves. I haven't moved a finger, and they've already raised the price from 150 to 210. How lucky I am! What a good price I'm going to get for my house! I'll agree to close the sale at 210. But before the sale closes at 210, 
Mr. A. E., who is very interested in buying the good and is willing to pay up to 250, pushes up the bidding. He says 230. And again, Miss B's heart jumps. Imagine that, 230. I'm speechless. I'm the luckiest woman in the world. I'm so happy. I'll sell it to him for 230 right away. But before the deal closes at 230, Mr. A. D., who is willing to pay up to 280, says, I'll offer you 260. Ms. B. says, this is truly extraordinary. Notice that in one-sided competition among buyers, the price tends, spontaneously, and by the force of entrepreneurship, to gradually approach the maximum valuation of the buyer. Before the deal closes, what does Mr. A. say? No, ladies and gentlemen, I am the one with the most interest, 290. And AD, AE, AB and AC, who have less capacity to make exchanges, are all outbid. The deal will be closed at a price between 280 and 300, and the subjective valuation of the seller is totally irrelevant. Note that this is very important. So, in one-sided competition among buyers, visualize the example of the English auction, we can say, as economic theorists, that the price will lie in a much narrower range. It will be set between two limits. The upper limit, as always, the buyer's subjective valuation, cannot be higher than 300. And what is the lower limit? The subjective valuation of the outbid buyer with the greatest capacity to make exchanges. That is, the outbid buyer who is willing to pay the most, which is AD, at 280. The price will be set between 280 and 300. And remember, the valuation of the seller is completely irrelevant. That is extremely important. So, the auction as an institution has developed for the following reasons. It is a market process which spares participants a huge amount of haggling effort. It makes entrepreneurial knowledge available, since the subjective valuations of the parties are revealed. And, moreover, it is the process most favorable to the potential seller. Therefore, my advice to a grief-stricken widow who must sell her home is to either place an ad with a view to attracting more potential buyers or auction the home.